we're going to be looking at Kirchhoff's laws. Kirchhoff's first law, also known as the current law, states that the sum of the currents entering a junction is equal to the sum of the currents leaving a junction. So if we consider this junction here, the currents entering the junction are I1 and I2, and the currents leaving the junction are I3 and I4. So according to Kirchhoff's first law, we'd say I1 plus I2 will equal I3 plus I4. Kirchhoff's first law is due to the conservation of charge. And if you remember the definition of current, it is the rate of flow of charge. So at a junction, that you'd have the same amount of charge that enters the junction will equal the same amount of charge leaving the junction. So the total charge will remain constant. If we apply Kirchhoff's first law to this circuit, where we have current I1 leaving the battery, and that will pass through resistor R1. At junction C, the current has a choice to go through either R2 or R3. So then we can have current I2 through resistor R2 and current I3 through resistor R3. At junction F, these two currents will combine to produce our original current I1. At junction C, the current entering it is I1, and that will equal the current leaving C, so that will be I2 plus I3. At F, the current entering it will be I2 and I3, and that will equal the current leaving junction F, which is I1. Kirchhoff's second law, which is also known as the voltage law, states that the sum of the PDs, or voltages, across all the components in a circuit loop is equal to the sum of the EMFs provided by the voltage sources in the loop. So if we apply Kirchhoff's second law to this circuit, we have three loops. We have loop A, B, C, F, G. We also have loop A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And the third loop is loop C, D, E, F. If we consider circuit loop A, B, C, F, G, the components in the loop are R1 and R2. So the sum of the PDs across these components will be V1 plus V2 and that will equal the EMF of the voltage sources in that loop which is this battery here so the EMF will equal V so we can then say that V will equal V1 plus V2. For loop A, B, C, D, E, F, G the components in that loop are R1 and R3. So the sum of the PDs of these components are V1 plus V3. And they will equal the sum of the EMFs in the loop, which is from our battery VMF V. So we can say V will equal V1 plus V3. If we compare the two loops, we can then see that V2 must equal V3. So that is confirming that voltage or parallel components are the same. If we now consider circuit loop C, F, E, D, so we're going round clockwise. Well, the components are R2 and R3, so the sum of the PDs will be V2, but it'll be minus V3, because if we consider the current through R2 
and R3. The current will go from C to F for R2 and for R3 it will go from D to E. So the voltage is in the opposite direction to the circuit loop. So the current is going D to E, but we're considering the loop E to D. So we can say that V2 minus V3, because they're in opposite directions, will equal the sum of the EMFs in that loop. Well, there's no EMFs in that loop, so the EMF is zero. So we can say V2 minus V3 is zero. And this is just confirming that V2 equals V3. Kirchhoff's second law is due to the conservation of energy. And this is coming from the definition that voltage relates to the energy. So if you remember, it is equal to electrical energy transferred per unit charge. I'm going to apply energy conservation to series and parallel circuits. So if we first consider two resistors R1 and R2 connected in series. Well, we know that the current I is the same in series for the resistors. The electrical energy supplied by the battery will be given by ITV, or I'm going to write it as VIT. This electrical energy that's been supplied by the battery will then be transferred at resistors R1 and R2, converted into heat energy. So the electrical energy transferred at R1 will be V1IT. The electrical energy transferred at R2 will be V2IT. From principle of conservation of energy, the electrical energy supplied will be equal to the electrical energy transferred at R1 and R2. So we can then equate these two. As IT is common throughout, it can cancel. So then we get voltage is equal, voltage V is equal to V1 plus V2. So in series, voltage is shared or divided between the components in order to conserve energy. If we now consider the two resistors R1 and R2 connected in parallel, we know from Kirchhoff's first law that the current I from the battery will split at this junction here. So you have some current going through R1, which was I1, and you have some current going through R2, which is I2. So the current I will equal I1 plus I2. The electrical energy supplied by the battery, again, will equal VIT. The electrical energy transferred at resistor R1 will be V1I1T. And the electrical energy transferred at resistor R2 will be V2I2T. From the principle of conservation of energy, the electrical energy supplied from the battery will equal electrical energy transferred to heat at resistors R1 and R2. So we can equate these two expressions. We can see T is common throughout, so it can cancel. And we also know from Kirchhoff's first law that I equals I1 plus I2. So we can substitute for that here. So that will give this. If we times out the brackets, we get this. And so you can see then if we consider for resistor R1, then V I1 must equal V1 I1. So that means V must equal V1. 
for resistor R2, VI2 must equal V2I2. So that means V must equal V2. So what this is confirming, showing you that in parallel, the voltage is the same in order to conserve energy. Thus, this is confirming Kirchhoff's second law, where the, for a circuit loop, the sum of the PDs in that loop will equal to the sum of the EMFs in that loop. If we now apply Kirchhoff's second law to this situation, where we're trying to get the voltmeter reading, so that is the voltage across the light bulb, the light bulbs are component, so the voltage, the PD of the light bulb, will equal to the sum of the EMF sources in that circuit. So there's two EMF sources. We've got 6.0 volts from the top battery and 1.5 volts from the bottom battery. However, the way they're connected, their positive terminals are connected together. So that means they're in opposite directions because the 6.0 volt battery will provide a current in an anti-clockwise direction, while the 1.5 volt battery will provide a current in a clockwise direction. So they'll provide currents that will oppose each other. So the sum of the EMFs will be 6.0 volts minus the 1.5 5 volts which will equal the 4.5 volts and that will equal the potential difference the voltage across the light bulb which will help be the voltmeter reading.